Okay, so now we have SPs, Ds, Fs. So we have electron clouds, also known as orbitals. And then we have these numbers that represent energy levels. So we're going to start to see, it gets a little sticky in people's heads of what's an energy level, what's an orbital. So we're going to describe all that, don't worry. Okay, so we've got something called the Aufbau Principle. That's kind of fun to say. And the Aufbau Principle says basically that electrons are lazy, hence Mr. Lazy over here, that electrons will fill the lowest energy orbital first. So in other words, if it has a choice of what type of electron cloud to go into, it's going to go into the one that's the lowest energy. It doesn't want to have to work to be in an orbital, to be in an electron cloud. So if it has a choice, it's going to first choose to go into an S cloud. If all the S clouds are full, then it'll go to a P. If the S's and P's are filled up, then third choice, D. And it'll only go into an F if it really has to. So that's orbitals, electron clouds, the S, P, D, F. But then there's also these energy levels, the numbers, right, that we represent with N. And it says, how could we figure out the maximum number of electrons an energy level can hold? There's a little formula for 2n squared. So what that means, if you are in the first energy level, if you are in the level of the atom that's closest to the nucleus, we're going to plug in the number 1 into that equation. Well, 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. If you're in the second energy level, we'll plug 2 into that equation. So 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. If you're in the third energy level, we plug 3 into that equation. 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. You might remember those numbers of 2, 8, and 18, perhaps from your junior high science days, that when you were drawing pictures of atoms that looked something like this, that when you were distributing the electrons of an atom, that if you had 2, 8, and 18, it means that two electrons would fit in that level closest to the nucleus. And then eight would fit in the next closest level to the nucleus. And then 18 and so on, right? But you might be thinking, wait, but you said the atom doesn't really look like that. It doesn't look like planets around the sun. It doesn't look kind of like an onion slice. It's three-dimensional, that jelly donut idea. So how could you have energy levels and orbitals? What's going on there? And, and right around now, people kind of go, what's the difference between an energy level and an orbital? It starts to get a little sticky with the vocab. So orbitals are within energy levels. So let's look at our colored periodic table to help us with that idea. So if we're looking at the orbitals are within energy levels, if I said, tell me about the orbitals, the electron clouds, S, P, D, or F, that you would find in the first energy level, what I want you to do is look at just row one of the periodic table. We're in the first energy level here. In the first energy level, what orbitals exist? So what cloud shapes exist when you're really close to the nucleus? The cloud shapes that exist really close to the nucleus, well, in that row one, I only see pink boxes, which represent 
S-shaped clouds. So in our first energy level, the one that's closest to the nucleus, you'll only get S-shaped clouds. You won't find P-shaped clouds, D-shaped clouds, F-shaped clouds in that first energy level, really close to the nucleus. What if we were in the second energy level, let's say? So what that means is our atom is a little bit bigger. It has a few more electrons. They won't all fit in that first layer closest to the nucleus. So we're in energy level two this time. So we're looking at row two. If I said, tell me about what orbital types exist in the second energy level. I see some pink boxes and I see some yellow boxes. Pink is S and yellow is P in our color-coded periodic table. So that means I have S kind of clouds and P kind of clouds in my atoms. Get S and P. So what that means is if you had a nucleus, let's say, there's our positive nucleus, and we had an S-shaped cloud, and it had one energy level. That S-shaped cloud would be very close to the nucleus. If it was in the second energy level, you could get also an S-shaped cloud. It would just be a little bit bigger, a little bit further away from that nucleus. The green one is still hiding underneath here but it's like layers, there's that jelly donut. There's also P-shaped clouds, which are the ones that kind of have a little bit of a dumbbell shape to them. So if I do P-shaped clouds in the second energy level, so it's still the same distance away from the nucleus as my two S's, but I have this P-shaped clouds Kind of looks something like that. They're all overlapping one another. If we get to the third energy level, so let's look at our third energy level. Third energy level, I see some third energy level stuff here. I see some over here. And then we also have this guy, third energy level in the center. We said 18 electrons could fit in the third energy level, right? Well, two of those 18 could fit in S-shaped clouds. Six of those 18 could fit in P-shaped clouds. And 10 of them could fit in D-shaped clouds. So we have S, P, and D in our third energy level. Your F-shaped clouds don't show up until you get to the fourth energy level. That's when our Fs show up.